Hello and welcome to this special edition of Today in Nashville. For the next half hour, we get to explore some of the summer highlights of Southern Living Magazine. The headquarters are located in the sweet city of Birmingham, Alabama, and Carol and I got to take a road trip to find out what goes on behind the scenes. Now, if you've ever flipped through one of those magazines, you have seen the gorgeous photos inside. Well, it takes a lot of time and careful planning to create those beautiful images. We got to chat with one of Southern Living's photographers to see how he creates the perfect shot. You see the beautiful images and we are meeting one of the people behind them at Southern Living. This is Hector Sanchez. He's one of the photographers. We're watching you in action back here. You're shooting already for Thanksgiving, which mm -hmm. is incredible. Mm -hmm. How many shots are you going to take in a given day? Well, this particular shoot is made up of uh, uh, three table settings. So I would say probably for this one, I'll turn in three to 500 images. Uh, and you know, there's a lot of tweaks that we have to do to the images with the editing, with the color, with uh, making things uh, straight and, and just beautiful. So well, we hand all of those over to the, our, our editor and they make the final selects from there. Well, you most certainly make it incredibly beautiful. Okay, to all of us at home who like to Instagram our meals and tablescapes, <laughs> yeah. are there any tips to sort of getting it just right or making something look good? Oh, I see you've you got know, an overhead camera. Yeah, That's a nice so, advantage. So this, this shoot's uh, a little bit uh, interesting because we have three or four different angles we need to do the shot at. So uh, leveling the camera is very important and that's a tip, you know, making sure you use a level to get the camera straight so that everything is, uh, your angles are all straight. You know, then we're working with a uh, prop stylist that also has her tricks and things that she's uh, working with to, to make things nice and beautiful. I mean, there's such a science behind it. And you were saying even the tiniest movement yes. of a glass or yes. a fork yes. is going to change the whole yes. look of the photograph. Because it all has to do with perspective, especially when you're photographing uh, something from above. Uh, things tend to look a little distorted. Um, so uh, you're looking down at the, at the scene and uh, things have a way of like bowing out. So a lot of times we have to over or correct for that maybe putting a little piece of plastic or uh, uh, wax under one edge of a glass to make it lean in. So, oh, yeah. Interesting, mm -hmm. yeah. Like and that. These are right. just like tiny tips that we're finding out. Yes, yes, so yeah. Well, and in this building, you have so many props and things at your disposal. It's gotta be pretty fun to see it all oh, come yes. together. Oh uh, yes, maybe we can give you a tour of the prop uh, closet downstairs, which is not a closet, it's an entire floor of this building and it's just nothing but you know whether it's chairs and surfaces and all kinds of plates and yeah, anything you can possibly think of is down there so, and it's right. great to be around all of that and in you one said place. you actually do look at instagram and you yes. get some inspiration so all instagrammers the out there instagram keep up the good work instagram is very important to us as photographers and our creative uh, our creative team yes. and at southern living people submit things to you that can yes. happen yes absolutely how would someone yes. do that just tag you. I, you go to the instagram page and you tag us and maybe you know, maybe Southern Living will pick one of those images and we got a chance. Yeah. We, we got, got a chance. Yes. Hector, we love you. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. It. So <laughs> fun. <laughs> we got no chance. <laughs> it's so cool. You will definitely see some gorgeous photos in the current issue of Southern Living. It's the August issue featuring timeless Southern style. So beautiful. It's on newsstands right now. All right, coming up, we recently shared the history behind the hummingbird cake. Well, today we're taking a look at all of the spin-off treats that have been created thanks to this southern dessert staple. We've got details after the break. Make it your best morning ever. Live local music, celebs. Makes good sitcoms with the most horrible people. I just feel like I'm in the right soil at the right time. And ridiculous fun. That's brilliant. Live your best life. Weekday mornings at 11 with Today in Nashville. Welcome back to this special edition of Today in Nashville as we present a Southern Living Summer. On a recent episode of our show, we took a look at the history behind the classic hummingbird cake. Well, now this dessert has been enjoyed all over the South for decades. People love it so much that Southern Living created all sorts of other goodies using that sweet banana base. Carol and I sat down with Nella McGough at Southern Living to find out about all of those tasty treats. Out of the tens of thousands of recipes that come from Southern Living, the hummingbird cake is like the most iconic. Absolutely. And then came the spinoffs. 
Everybody mm -hmm. wanted a little humming, <laughs> hummingbird style, right? Right. So talk about all the recipes that we sort of got from this iconic cake. Look, this cake was so popular that we just couldn't let it go. We had to use this flavor profile in whatever we could think of. So we have done pancakes, cupcakes, power bars, lightened hummingbird cake, a bunt cake. We've done a twist on it with a different kind of frosting. So those are just a few of the things that we have done with the hummingbird cake. When you talk about the power bar, that was the one that was like a power bar. Because now, you know, for anybody that's a not- A power bar is gonna be great. Right, no, it's gonna taste stuff. great. <laughs> It's gonna taste great, but the consistency of it is what I'm wondering about yeah. because there is a lot, um, it's it's definitely a moist mixture when yeah. you get it together with the right. bananas and everything. And, and the and yeah. Talk about, when you say flavor profile, uh, for those who don't know, what are the, what's the flavor profile? Well, it's very tropical. And so it's bananas and pineapple and pecans and cinnamon. Brown sugar. And cream cheese. Keep talking. So good. All, <laughs> the, all the things. Okay, so listen, I know we all try to tweak recipes every once in a while. Was there one that you discovered that was just a fail? Like, don't try to do this with the hummingbird profile. You know, I don't know. The first time back in the day, we had. Um, a ranking of recipes that were sent in by readers. And back in that day, we would get a thousand recipes a month by readers. And so they would test each one of them, and the highest ranking was a three. And when it's a three, you don't have to tweak it, retest it, or anything. And this got a three. Mm. So I don't think they varied too much. You know, yeah, they didn't from, make it into a weird jello or anything like that. No, but know. that's an idea. <laughs> Maybe we should try that. I Carol with, with an E. <laughs> Carol's jello. Now, you mentioned that you actually did a video. So, for people that want to try this cake and try to make mm -hmm. it at home, there's a video out there. How many so, times has it been viewed? 20 million. Over 20 million. Mm -hmm. Wow. I think there is a feeling of like nostalgia uh, for a lot of cooks and bakers right. out there. They go, gosh, I don't, I want to go back. Right. I want to go yeah. back and recreate. Right. You know, and I think it's something about, like you said, nostalgia or those sweet memories of your grandmother baking, and you just kind of want to recreate that. And so that's what this hummingbird cake is for so many people. I love it. it. Go watch the video. Make it at home. Yep. Think about Grandma. It's going to be delicious. Thank yep. you so much, Miss Allen. You're so welcome. You can check out all of those yummy recipes on Southern Living's website. There's an entire food section filled with recipes. You head over to southernliving.com and check it out. Coming up, stripes are in the summer. We are checking out the latest trend from Southern Living's style editor right after the break. Today in Nashville rocks. There's only one place to see live local music every morning. The soundtrack to living your best life. Weekday mornings at 11 with Today in Nashville. Welcome back and thank you for joining us on this special edition of Today in Nashville. We are presenting a Southern Living Summer. Southern Living Magazine covers everything from food to decor to Southern style. And this summer, it's all about stripes. No matter how you wear them, we learn stripes are in the season. Carol and I sat down with Southern Living Style Editor Betsy Cribb to learn more. I mean, what a beautiful setting out here of Southern Living. Uh, uh, style Director Betsy, talking about stripes. We need to embrace the stripe this summer, yes? It's uh, having a moment? Yes, well, it's always having a moment. I feel like summer and stripes just go together. It's like the ice cream truck, like baseball games, hot dogs, stripes and summer just go together, so. Yeah. And I know that I lean toward the nautical stripe, but some of the things that you are showcasing in Southern Living, all of the stripes, well, all I, the colors. I think there's a stripe for everybody. I think, you know, some people love There's a stripe for everybody. Right. Different stripes for different, different well, that's folks. not gonna rhyme. Know, different right. strokes, different folks, you know, something like that. But yeah, I was I mean, feeling it. Yeah. Totally, so one of the designers we featured who I love, her name's Brooke Wright, she's out of Texas, and she does these really pretty painterly designs. So if you've always been like a true blue, nautical stripe girl, this is a good way to experiment with some rainbow and stripes. You, and you've got yes. it here. Yes, July, show your stripes. Show your so, stripes. Yeah. It's so cute. I always heard horizontal stripes make you look a little larger. 
But I seem to keep buying bathing suits that are horizontal stripes. What am I thinking? Well, you know, I just say do what you want. Choose your stripe and wear it proudly. So I think vertical, horizontal, rainbow, you know, nautical, whatever you want to do. But there are multiple ways to wear them. So if you aren't feeling comfortable with the horizontal stripe, you can take the stripes to your feet. So there's a pair of espadrilles I love that we've featured in this issue from Saludos. And they tie up around your ankle. They're super cute. Again, tapping into that nautical look that's a little more subtle if you're not ready to commit to full on stripe hood. Okay, I love that. Also, maybe some of your like bags or something, you could do a stripe somewhere else if you don't feel comfortable wearing it on your body. Right, right? and people are totally into, you know, bows, ribbons, et cetera these days. So if you have a fun scarf and stripes, I think that'd be really fun to tie around your neck or tie in a ponytail. I don't have a great ponytail. Ugh you know, sadness of having short hair, but if you've got a great head of hair like y'all do, you know, tie it up in your ponytail and you've got like a little 70s thing going too. Feeling more stylish by the minute. Stripes here in Southern Living. You've done well, girl. Thank you, thank you. I love it, I'm inspired. You will be too. So much prettiness. You can always find style tips in the pages of Southern Living Magazine. And don't forget, you can check out the style section of southernliving.com so you can always look your Southern best. All right, speaking of dressing your best, it's time for a bridal shower. Our friend Ivy is showing us how to throw a sweet shower on a small budget. It's coming up on Today in Nashville. Today in Nashville rocks. Live local music, the hottest restaurants. That just blew my mind. And general insanity. Team, team assemble. assemble! You didn't see that coming, did you? I really didn't. Live your best life weekday mornings at 11 with Today in Nashville. Welcome back to Today in Nashville as we present a Southern Living Summer. The summer months are often filled with all sorts of parties. And oftentimes, you have to get creative with your party planning so you don't wind up breaking the bank. Well, our friend Ivy Odom is here to help. She's the host of Southern Living Show, Hey Y'all. And today, she is sharing tips on throwing the perfect bridal shower. Hey y'all, I am throwing my very first wedding shower for my best friend, Rebecca. I'm on a millennial budget. My mama is not helping me with this one, but I found a few ways to make this wedding shower look fancy without breaking the bank. Rebecca loves horses, so I chose a Kentucky Derby theme for this wedding shower, and y'all know how much I love food. So after choosing a theme, the first thing that I do is choose a menu. I'm getting started with these Kentucky Hot Browns, but making them miniature. Kentucky Hot Browns are a very traditional Kentucky Derby food. Normally, they're like a knife and fork situation with a big slice of bread with melty cheese and bacon and tomatoes and turkey. I've turned them into many things so you can eat them and still not get yourself in a mess at a wedding shower. This is the very thin white bread from Pepperidge Farm. Seriously, for any wedding shower, you're gonna need about four loaves of very thin white bread. So we have these toasted in little rounds that I used a biscuit cutter to cut and we're gonna top it with the rest of our ingredients. This is just a traditional cheddar cheese sauce with some diced turkey and I'm going to place just a little bit on each one of these, top it with some Parmesan cheese and bacon and then broil it until it's so gooey and melty and then come back out and top it with tomato and more bacon because Lord knows you can never have too much of that. Oh my gosh, they look great. My Parmesan cheese is melted. The ends got a little crispy, which is totally fine. I can smell the bacon, I can smell the cheese. It, these are exactly where I want them to be. Now that these are out of the oven, I'm going to top each one with one slice of a plum tomato and then some more crumbled bacon. The mint julep is the classic Kentucky Derby drink and it's so pretty to look at in that pretty mint julep glass, but we can all probably agree that it's not the tastiest of drinks. For this wedding shower, I chose a blush lily. That is the signature cocktail of the Kentucky Oaks, the race before the Kentucky Derby with all of the female horses. It is made with cranberry juice and vodka, which is one of Rebecca and my favorite flavor combinations. For me, it's Tito's because it's a classic Southern vodka, but you can use whatever you like. This is freshly squeezed lime juice and triple sec, which is so nice because it adds a sweet orange flavor, which kind of cuts the tartness of the cranberry and the lime juice. I'm gonna put this on my table, but wait to put ice in it just before my guests arrive. 
Y'all, when you're choosing your menu for a wedding shower, choose recipes that you can easily make ahead. A classic Kentucky Derby food is the famous Benedictine dip, which is made with some cucumbers and some grated onion and of course mayonnaise because we're in the South. I have turned it into a spread, which is perfect for tea sandwiches because they look so cute on this little stand and you can make them ahead. These are derby truffles, which are a take on the classic bourbon ball, but they're dipped in chocolate and rolled in pecans. I am so excited about this cheese derby hat that I found on Pinterest. It is a wheel of brie topped with another wheel of brie to look like a derby hat. How cute is that? This is the brim of the hat, and this is the top of the hat, and then I'm gonna get some ribbon and wrap it around this, cut it to size. Then you take a small bunch of flowers and pin it to the top. Look how cute this is. This hat is fit for the Queen of England, but you made it in the form of cheese. I think this will be for sure the hit of your party. Look how cute it is, it's so cute. I really am so excited about it. Now I'm going to show you how to make a table setting that I promise does not cost you near as much as you think it does. This was a glass vase that I found at a thrift store and I spray painted to look like a trophy. And these are some julep glasses that I borrowed from one of my friends. The flowers are a mix of ones that I pulled from my yard, my neighbor's yard, and I went to Trader Joe's, which has flowers for super cheap, and put them into these for a really cute but affordable centerpiece. If you don't have a full set of china, don't worry, it's totally fine. You can get everyone who's helping you throw the shower to bring in a couple of their place settings and mix and match, or you can go to the thrift store and grab a couple of plates. I found these inexpensive frames at a craft store, mixed and matched them and put the place cards in them and they make a really cute place setting. I'm decorating with some horses. These are actually plastic and I spray painted them silver. Before my guests start to arrive, I have a couple of last minute things that I need to finish up. I'm gonna go change clothes upstairs and then finish everything up in the kitchen. No derby party is complete without a fascinator. My guests are about to start arriving dressed to the nines. This is my wedding shower. I was able to pull it off pretty inexpensively and without a whole lot of extra work going into it. And honestly, I had a pretty good time. We'll see you next time on Hey Y'all. Now you're ready to throw your next party and be sure to check out Ivy's online show, Hey Y'all. You can find it on Southern Living's YouTube channel. Thank you so much for joining us on this special edition of Today in Nashville. As a reminder, Southern Living Magazine is a part of our parent organization, the Meredith Corporation. Be sure to pick up the latest copy of Southern Living Magazine on stands now. It's the August issue and it's featuring timeless Southern style. Thank you so much for joining us. We hope you have a great weekend, everybody. We'll see you back here Monday.